So, uh, shall we start? So, anyway, we are, I think we are live now. So, good evening to all the dignitaries, participants, uh, my colleagues, my dear colleagues, my dear students, and uh, friends. It's an honor and privilege uh, for me today to welcome you all to this international webinar on trade emotional intelligence and resilience at the time of COVID-19. On behalf of management, on the organizing committee, and the entire team of Basveshwar Engineering College, and uh, on behalf of uh, uh, London Psychometric Lab, UCL, it gives me a distinct pleasure to heartily offer you all welcome uh, to the speaker. Firstly, I'd like to welcome um, the speaker of today's webinar, Dr. K.B. Petrites, Professor of Psychology and Psychometrics at University College London, and the president of today's uh, webinar, Dr. S.S. Ingenieri, who is the principal of Basveshwar Engineering College Autonomous Bagulkot. I welcome all the participants from different countries uh, to this unique webinar. I also welcome our faculty colleagues, students, and all other people who are directly and indirectly connected to this webinar. Now, I'll also take this opportunity um, to introduce the resource person uh, and, or the speaker uh, for today's webinar, that is Dr. K.V. Petrides, uh, Constantine V. Uh, Petrides. He's a professor of psychology and psychometrics at University College London, UK. He's the founding director of London Psychometric Laboratory, a developer of psychobiomy, a major psych psycho uh, physiological system showing, among other insights, how the mind can be trained, directed to produce desired effects both in uh, psychological as well as in physical domains. Now, uh, Patrice has also uh, developed a very well known theory of trait emotional intelligence. Now, half of the audience, I mean, almost all audience are aware of trait emotional intelligence, and uh, it is developed by uh, a British psychologist, none other than uh, Dr. K.V. Petrides, and uh, we are going to hear himself uh, from himself today. And the family of trait emotional intelligence questionnaires are extensively used uh, commercially uh, in industries and in research settings, in academic settings all around the world. Now, he was born uh, in Thessaloniki, and I'm, I'm sure I'm pronouncing it right, in Greece in 1972. He holds a bachelor degree in business administration in summa cum laude honors of Pace University, New York, USA, and diploma in psychology from University of Nottingham, UK, MSc in psychological uh, research methods, specialized in psychometrics and behavioral statistics from the University of Exeter, UK, and taught by first ever professor in psychometric in the UK by Professor Paul Klein. Now, co-authored two peer-reviewed papers with the legendary 20th century psychologist, Hans J. Essensik. Uh, I'm, I'm sure I'm, I'm spelling it right. And um, a PhD, he has secured his PhD and specialized in individual differences, psychometrics and behavioral statistics from uh, University College London. First ever professor at psychometrics at University College London, um, the birthplace of psychometrics, which is has published extensively, and I don't have to tell about uh, his publications, and uh, it, it is well-known throughout the world, leading peer-reviewed journals in many different uh, fields, and lectures internationally in psychobionomy, uh, trait emotional intelligence, and philosophy of mind. And I don't, uh, uh, I, I personally would like to say, um, Dr. Patrice does not need any formal introduction because he's, he's already an international figure and a, um, a researcher of well, no, I know the international repute, and uh, he's always, you know, he's also. If you type emotional intelligence on uh, Wikipedia or anywhere, his name is taken along with uh, uh, Mayor and Peter Salovey and Goldman, so and Baron. So we are very privileged to have him here today. So that uh, we have the tribes uh, with us, and I don't want to say much about the uh, webinar, which is already displayed uh, in the. Brocha. Uh, this 
webinar has been jointly organized by Basveshwar Engineering College, uh, Bagalkot, India, MBA department, in association with London Psychometric Laboratory, uh, UCL, UK. Now, why this webinar? Because uh, resilience is the uh, important aspect what we are looking at uh, when there is times of COVID and how to have resilience and how to bounce back from such difficult situations. And that's what we're going to know from the Triple Prize today. And uh, one more thing I'd like to highlight here that we have participants from 41 different nations. And uh, um, I'll name some of them that is Argentina, Australia, USA, Portugal, South Africa, Austria, Greece, Italy, Malaysia, Russia, Spain, Switzerland, Netherlands, UK, of course, which is also the host country, India, of course, which is also host country, Greece, Hong Kong, um, Czech Republic, Denmark, and the list goes on. And I don't uh, think I need to do this thing. So I welcome all the participants from all different countries. And um, I'd like to say one more thing that we have a lot of participants. 30% uh, of the participants coming from the industry. I welcome all of them and our faculty friends and students uh, who are attending this. So that was it. So now uh, um, let me take this opportunity to uh, formally uh, to ask our beloved principal, who is the president of this function, Dr. SS Ingenuity, to address the gathering, please. Yeah, very good afternoon to all. I hope I'm audible. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Uh, first of all, on behalf of uh, the management of uh, <coughs> BVV Sangha and my own self and all the entire BC fraternity, take this opportunity to welcome Dr. K. V. Petrides, uh, University College London, uh, who has readily accepted to be the key speaker for this particular international webinar. And before I forget, I also would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Anji for having organized this for the benefit of uh, the people across the globe. Just, I would like to share a few thoughts of mine uh, and a brief little about our college as it is uh, for the benefit of uh, these participants across the globe. I am also very happy to note that we have almost uh, from 41 plus countries who are participating in this uh, webinar uh, so at least to give a little brief about us so that uh, we come to know better uh, each other and in the day we can also be associated basveshwar engineering college bagalkot was established in the year 1963 and it has a history of around 57 years and we are one of the constituent colleges of uh, a trust called BVV Sangha, Basveshwara Veera Shaiva Vidya Vardaka Sangha, headed by Chairman Dr. Veeranna Charantimat. And he also happens to be MLA of the Bagalkot constituency where the college has been located. He has been our chairman for the last 30 years and under his uh, leadership, the technical education as well as um, in the other parts uh, in all domains of medical sciences and uh, the regular arts, science and commerce, uh, this part of the society has been benefited to a very larger extent. So we have around almost around 6,000 faculty who are working with almost 50,000 uh, students who have been benefited in the field of uh, education. I would rather say in a population of around 1.5 lakhs, the 50% of population is being constituted by the students of uh, BVV Sangha at Bagalkot. So it has been an educational hub serving the society at a large in the northern part of Karnataka. The Swisher Engineering College Bagalkot, I am very happy to lead this institution being an alumni of uh, Basveshwar Engineering College Bagalkot and uh, ever since 1985 I have been serving as a faculty and I have this rare opportunity of leading from the front as a principal since February 1st, 2020. So I'm very proud to be an alumni of this college and also to lead as a principal of this particular prestigious institution. Uh, owing to this uh, COVID, uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges that have been thrown open. 
uh, where there was not much of uh, uh, preparedness amongst the educational institutions and where we were also most of the institutions across the globe were also not prepared for the online uh, challenges thrown open by this COVID. But now the last 200 plus countries have been facing this particular problem and fighting across the, the COVID disease to contain the loss of life. So as we understand, the spread of this uh, disease has caused a lot of damage to the mankind. And uh, as I understand, around 15.4 million uh, population has been affected by this COVID and where there have been almost around 0 0.63 uh, million deaths that have taken place across the globe. And uh, India alone, we have around 1.24 million who have been affected and 0 0.29 million uh, population where the people have uh, lost their life owing to this. So these online webinars, the workshops and seminars have been now the part of uh, all of us in the field of education. And uh, this uh, topic, what uh, Dr. K. V. Petrides uh, is delivering today uh, through this webinar, that is the trait emotional intelligence and the resilience at the time of COVID-19 has been a very opt uh, topic. Uh, because what do I also understand from the learned people is that the most of the loss of lives that has taken place because of this disease is by uh, the fear that it has induced across the uh, people. So taking that into consideration, so this topic is very opt at this particular moment. I am very sure the uh, people who are participating in this webinar will definitely be benefited and will also uh, bring an awareness to the people in and around them so that this can be contained uh, to a larger extent. Now, the credentials of Basveshwar Engineering College Bagalkot, all the 10 departments, we have 10 departments, undergraduate programs, and we have seven postgraduate programs, and uh, eight departments have been recognized as the research centers. We have been accredited by the standard uh, accreditation bodies at national level. One is the National Board of Accreditation, New Delhi, where our all 10 programs have been accredited. And another one is the University Grants Commission, where it's one of the governing bodies at the national level. So we also have the NAC accreditation for the college as a whole from uh, UGC. Then we also take the credit or have the benefit of having the accreditation from uh, the UK, that is QSI gauge. So our institution has also been accredited by QSI gauge uh, in the last year. And recently, we also had the privilege of acquiring uh, the E-LEAD certification for our preparedness to deliver the online mode of uh, teaching learning processes to our students. And I'm very happy to share on this particular occasion that uh, we stand at the national level in India where we have around 3,500 engineering colleges and we, we stand in the top 200. So if we leave apart the institutes, institutes of higher predominance, that is namely the IITs and uh, NITs, I would rather say we'll be in the top 100 uh, colleges giving the best of the technical education in India. So it's a matter of pride for all of us. And uh, I thank the organizers, that is uh, Dr. Hanji, for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this particular webinar and uh, also to be associated with uh, Dr. K.V. Petrides. And uh, we always look forward for the associations with the people of uh, national and international eminence and hope so we'll have an opportunity that K.V. Petrides uh, will visit our institution and uh, the faculty and the students of this area also will be benefited. Sir, we are very happy to have you on this particular day and I thank wholeheartedly on behalf of management and myself and the entire BEC fraternity. Wholeheartedly thank you once again for accept, accepting our invitation. Hope our all the participants will be benefited and I wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sanjay? Thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you for your time. Sir. Okay. So, I, with the permission of uh, Dr. K. V. Petrides, I would rather take leave because of my other engagements. Uh, I hope you'll kindly permit me, sir. Absolutely. So, really, um, I'm assuming you can all see my slides now, perhaps in addition to myself. But uh, I'm sharing my slides and uh, I don't know if these are visible now. Yes, sir. Dr. Yes. Oh, okay, visible. good. So, let me then uh, formally uh, open by thanking uh, Basaveshwar College, the principal, 
the coordinators and specifically uh, Dr. Sanjay Hanji for organizing this uh, complex event, uh, particularly from a technological perspective and uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, connect with you all. So uh, I particularly like the college's uh, uh, logo here and you can see uh, the strap line, work is workship. And you might also have heard the expression work is worship. And I liked it because it got me thinking, why do we work? And, or what should we work for? And my answer to this question is that we should work for excellence. We shouldn't work for uh, money or for success or for fame, but we should work for uh, excellence. And when we work for excellence, there's one major advantage, and that is that we don't really get attached to the outcome of our uh, work. And the reason we don't get attached is because we work for excellence. We always try to do the best under the particular circumstances we find ourselves in. So whether you're working on a small task or seemingly small task, or whether you're working on a seemingly big project, you always work for the same outcome, which is excellence. It's also true, of course, that uh, when you work for excellence, all these other things like uh, money and success and fame tend to follow. But they follow as uh, side effects and in a manner that's uh, effortless and it is uh, uncomplicated, it's untaxing. Anyway, I am uh, very pleased that uh, this launch today, which is the launch of my world teaching mission, is happening under the auspices of an Indian university, which uh, complements academic knowledge with wisdom. I have to say that it also feels a little bit strange for me because I have always gone to India in order to learn, never in order to teach. Of course, I've had uh, uh, several invitations to teach in India, but out of my deep respect for the Indian lore, which I think is simply unparalleled in this world, uh, I never really uh, went to teach there, but I've gone, of course, and very frequently in order to, uh, to learn. So... It feels a little bit strange today, but then again, you know, I'm not really in India. I'm here in my home in uh, central uh, London, but still I can feel the, um, the connection. So starting now, I'd like to say a few things <clears throat> about the structure of the webinar today. And of course, I have to say that we have major potential for running late today. And uh, I hope that you have time and you're not particularly busy, and even if you are, I promise that uh, it's going to be uh, worth it. I'm going to make it uh, worth it for you, if you can stick around until the end. There's two uh, sections to the webinar. Uh, the first one is on uh, trade AI, an introduction to the theory of trade emotional intelligence, and also say a few things about the reach of the of the theory and the uh, research program. And that, I felt, you know, this is pretty short, but I felt it was necessary because... Uh, these days, we are really drowning in webinars and training programs, and everyone with a webcam is uploading content. So I thought it was important to give you a small glimpse of uh, some of the lab's achievements in order to help you put this webinar into uh, context. And I will focus uh, specifically and exclusively on scientific research contributions. We have very strong and constantly increasing commercial usage uh, all around the world. Some of the world's biggest companies are using the lab's instruments and, com and uh, outputs, but I really don't want to start dropping names today and turn this into some sort of commercial advertisement. So I'd like to focus today strictly on the scientific uh, impact. The uh, second and main part of the webinar will really focus on trade AI and specifically uh, its relationship with uh, resilience at the time of uh, COVID-19, the current crisis. So let me start by uh, saying a few things about what is trade AI. Well, trade AI is a theory that integrates personality traits, emotions, and intelligence, broadly defined. Hence, trait emotional intelligence. Trait AI is a theory that helps you connect to the tremendous power and possibilities that are latent and waiting to be discovered uh, in your conscious as well as subconscious a part of your mind. So Trait AI helps you connect to the capabilities, the power that's already latent in you, the powers that's, that's already latent in your emotional world 
conscious as well as subconscious, as I mentioned before. Trade AI now is an established field in psychology, and there are hundreds of peer-reviewed uh, journal publications. And I'm just going to show you uh, a little bit of information now from uh, the Web of Science, Thomson uh, Reuters here. You can see in this slide on the left uh, how, I don't know if you can also see my cursor, I suspect you can. These are the first publications here in two, year 2000, 2001, 2002, coming out of my PhD almost 20 years ago. And now all the way up now, you can go to 2019, where there were almost 100 research papers in peer-reviewed uh, journals on trait emotional intelligence uh, theory. So there are almost 700 records right now on uh, trait AI and thousands of citations uh, to the theory and uh, the main ideas and constructs underpinning it. And where does all this research come from? This is quite interesting to note. Well, it comes from many different fields and many different areas, which is uh, those of you who are working in uh, uh, science and academic science uh, today will know that it is an era uh, of uh, specialization, over specialization, I would say. We, we are you know, very specific about what we study and we rarely cross borders. But you will see here that uh, great emotional intelligence features in uh, fields and domains that are very interdisciplinary and the cross discipline boundaries. You see, most of the activity, of course, publications are in, in psychology, social psychology, including organizational uh, and uh, um, occupational psychology, educational psychology, clinical psychology, psychiatry, but then we also cross into areas like uh, uh, straightforward uh, mainstream management, neuroscience, linguistics, behavioral genetics, uh, mainline business publications, behavioral sciences, sports science, obstetrics and gynecology, medicine, family studies. So it's a theory that really uh, breaks down uh, barriers, which is really very rare, as I said, in uh, this day and age of uh, academic and scientific over-specialization. Um, many of you might be familiar with the Trait Emotional Intelligence Questionnaire, the TQ. It is used globally in commercial settings and, of course, in scientific and research settings. And... I sort of had the idea of uh, maybe showing you a brief bibliog partial bibliography underpinning the instrument just to see the hundreds and hundreds of scientific studies that are conducted around the world using the instrument. But I don't want to risk clicking on this today. I don't want to risk any uh, technological fiascos, particularly as I am uh, home alone and nobody's here to help me. So if you want to see a little bit about the scientific studies, the scientific bibliography of the TQ. If you go to our websites and navigate yourself, you'll find a partial bibliography. You'll literally see hundreds and hundreds uh, of studies conducted with the instrument. And as I said, commercial usage is also uh, expanding very quickly. And some of the world's uh, small, medium and very large companies and organizations are using the instrument and associated outputs. So that's a brief uh, introduction to some of the um, uh, ideas, research outputs, and reach of the um, uh, scientific program, which of course underpins this webinar today. And with that now, we can move into the sp a specific aspect of trait emotional intelligence that has come into sharp focus over the past few months, and that is resilience. So let's say a few things about resilience from the perspective of the uh, Trait Emotional Intelligence Research Program. <clears throat> so, we could say that resilience is the quality that allows us to adapt in the face of hardship, okay, in the face of uh, adversity. Now, the first thing that I would like to note about uh, uh, resilience, the first thing that strikes me at least, is that resilience is amoral. Now, it does not entail a sense of morality. So, for example, you can be a very resilient criminal or a very resilient offender. Or you can be very resilient in the mismanagement of your life. And many of us know people who are extremely resilient in terms of digging a deeper and deeper hole 
uh, to get themselves in, in their lives. They're very resilient in the mismanagement of, the, of their life. So there is a uh, distinction, let's say, between uh, resilience and morality. And I think, from my perspective, that the moral virtues ought to take priority over resilience. And perhaps we could uh, make a, a distinction between adaptive and maladaptive resilience. Yeah, resilience that is not good for us, in other words. That's what maladaptive means. A resilience that is bad for us. As I said, you know, if you're a resilient criminal or you're very resilient in doing the wrong thing in life, <laughs> that's not going to be to your advantage, ultimately. Um, Adaptive resilience uh, emerges, with the uh, emerges with the attainment of self-knowledge. So, in other words, adaptive resilience emanates naturally in the self-realized individual. It's not a question of, you know, how do I attain resilience? What do I need to do for it? It just simply flows uh, along with the attainment of uh, self-knowledge. Resilience, of course, has an emotional basis. And as a field of scientific research, it can be fully accommodated within the more general framework of trait emotional intelligence. Now, many of these notions that uh, become popular from time to time, like resilience, like the dark side of personality or dark personality traits that you might have heard about, like emotion regulation, uh, can be fully and entirely accommodated within the trait emotional intelligence model because the trait AI model is more general than these uh, individual constructs and, and uh, notions. Now, obviously, to be resilient, you need to be able to handle negative emotions. You know, there's no question about that. But trait AI is about more than handling negative emotions and trying to understand what happened. It is about shaping what happens next. Was it too often? Resilience has uh, connotations of survival. Uh, trait AI is about growing at the time of cri crisis. It's not about merely adapting or withstanding, standing your ground. It is about growing and expanding. With all the external uncertainty that we are currently facing, is it possible for us to be inwardly certain not that we will come through, not that we will pull through, not that we will stand our ground, but that we will actually thrive. And that is going beyond resilience. That is going beyond resilience and understanding that life is always in a state of flux, which is a, uh, the idea of uh, the Buddhist idea of uh, impermanence. Life is always in a state of change. Now, one caveat that follows from this, which is not very often highlighted in Buddhist uh, circles, is that because life is always in a state of uh, flux, because life is always in a state of change, unless you are explicitly growing, then you are explicitly receding. There is no staying still in life or holding your ground, as uh, some interpretations of resilience might imply. You might have uh, come across these uh, mainline interpretations of resilience that say, you know, you've got to be there, you've got to be strong, uh, hold your ground. You know, there's no holding your ground. Either you will be growing or you will be receding. And growth and recession are first and foremost psychological qualities. Uh, inner growth eventually manifests as improving life conditions, while inner decrease eventually manifests as reduced life conditions. Now, both of these, of course, start within, psychologically. So you may appear to be standing your ground externally, but inwardly, you could be becoming immense or you could be collapsing. But the point to understand here is that life is always changing. So unless you are growing, then you are receding. Now, the fact of impermanence also means that emotional attachment is a major contributor to non-resilience. Yep. So when we are emotionally attached to people, places, circumstances, that makes us highly non-resilient. If uh, you are emotionally attached to the status quo, for example, if you are attached to how things are, uh, along with the presumption that they will remain like that, then you must understand that you are severely non-resilient. In turn, of course, non-resilience becomes a source of negative emotions, and these can interact with patterns of negative thinking, and that eventually creates uh, conditions like anxiety and depression that are so uh, prevalent 
in society today. So, that brings us now to the uh, COVID part of the presentation. And um, while I'm no medical expert in this disease, I have leading expertise in dealing with its uh, psychological consequences. And I can certainly tell you that many people are interpreting this ordeal as a fierce grace and see in it opportunities for growth. So there's no doubt in my mind that many will emerge from this much stronger than before, both psychologically and externally in the world. They will take advantage of uh, this crisis in order to become stronger, in order to strengthen themselves, in order to become uh, more secure, more effective, psychologically and in terms of their uh, behavior. Now, irrespective of its origins and how quickly it will be resolved, which is still very unclear, COVID-19 or the responses to COVID-19, and I'm not really exploring today if the cure is worse than the disease, uh, like uh, many have argued, but irrespective of origins and how quickly it will be resolved, that this crisis has shaken up the world in the space of a few short months. Uh, and you can see here some big changes in the way in which we uh, greet ourselves, with the Eastern alternative, of course, being uh, far more graceful, I think, uh, compared to some of the novelties that are being uh, proposed over here in the West, as is uh, so often the case. And there have been um, many social as well as personal impacts that we are witnessing across the world. You know, social uh, impacts are for example, I've listed them in this slide, like uh, uh, office-based work is uh, very severely affected. Uh, there is extensive evidence, incidents, examples of ageism in, in our society. There's social segregation, the Black Lives, uh, Lives Matter movement that uh, was born in the midst of this, uh, of this crisis. There's also been personal um, impacts like, for example, the psychological shock of lockdown, which is uh, uh, particularly pronounced in uh, Western liberal democracies, because all of a sudden now people in these democracies are finding out that the state has the ability to shut down your business, uh, separate you from your relatives, lock you inside your home, abolish your right to uh, religious worship and more. So that's been a particular shock for people in Western liberal uh, democracies. And of course, there are changes in relationships and relationship breakdowns, changes of risk perception, and uh, so on and so forth. Now, the important thing that I would like to note from the perspective of this particular webinar is that COVID is not the cause of all these effects. It is the catalyst so take, for example, relationship breakdowns, which I mentioned as a uh, possible personal uh, impact of this crisis. Now, there is no way that, that a uh, solid relationship would break down because of COVID. This is simply not possible. However, relationships that are psychologically illegitimate, of which there are many, can suffer greatly from this uh, disruption. And the same for businesses. A business that has become... Uh, complacent, a business that has become undiversified, undirected, poorly led, will be exposed to severe shocks and may never recover. But COVID here is the catalyst for this. It is not the cause of the failure. Unfortunately, it's a very convenient scapegoat and a lot of people who will be failing during this crisis will be turning to COVID and blaming it all on the disease, when in fact the uh, causes of failure, the causes of the, prob are far, of the problems are far, far deeper. Uh, moving into the uh, uh, post-COVID future, there's uh, many possible negative untoward social developments that we could see in a, a post-COVID future, post-crisis future. We could see, and to some extent, we're already uh, experiencing restrictions on international travel, uh, electronic digital uh, surveillance, the denigration of the human being uh, as some kind of biohazard. And uh, 
many others may follow depending on how the whole situation uh, develops. The important thing, again, that I would like to note <coughs> for our purposes here is that uh, the fundamental laws and facts of life will not be affected by this crisis. The perennial laws under which life unfolds will not be in the least affected by this turmoil. Life is not random. It unfolds according to certain laws and principles, and it is incumbent on us to discover and apply these laws in our life. Discovering these laws under which uh, life operates is not simply a possibility, it is a responsibility for us. So we need to withdraw our attention, and attention, I should say here, attention is, is a vital resource. It is, attention is the vital resource today, not information. Attention is in short supply, not information. We are drowning in information, but our attention is our competitive advantage. Our attention is in very short, very limited uh, supply. So we need to withdraw it from wherever it is that it is currently dissipated. Uh, for example, in so-called uh, news programs or mindless entertainment. And we need to redirect it with, with laser-like precision to the investigation, discovery and application of the laws governing the mind and the laws governing life. So the COVID crisis is developing fully within uh, known parameters. And the question becomes, how can I, who is operating right in the midst of this crisis, not simply adapt to it, not simply be resilient to it, but actually expand and thrive? And I know uh, someone now hearing this is going through difficulty, through challenge, and I'm saying to you, never waste your trials in life. Learn lessons, evolve, strengthen yourself and understand that your success begins with you and it begins now in the present moment. So it is essential to take charge of your thinking, take charge of your actions in order to create the life that you want to experience. Otherwise, life will take charge of your uh, thinking, life will take charge of your actions in order to teach, teach you a lesson. And what is this lesson? That you must take charge of your thinking, and you must take charge of your own life and actions. So, we really do need to uh, liberate ourselves from the belief that's becoming more and more prevalent these days, that our success, or even our survival, is dependent on environmental conditions. And it is uh, subject to major disruptions or black swan events like COVID-19. This is not uh, the case. We have to take charge of our thinking. We have to take charge of our actions. And we need to be able to thrive and expand even in the midst of crisis. Because the future is psychological. And it is psychological because the present is also psychological. The conditions and the circumstances that we encounter in outside life are simply reflections of what is going on inside us. Now, I've been talking a lot about psychology and psychological thinking and psychological reality, so it's quite important, I think, to clarify that uh, I uh, explicitly do not refer to academic information. I'm not, I'm not referring to the psychology of the textbook. I'm not referring to the psychology of the uh, uh, scientific journal uh, uh, article. I am referring to intuitive knowledge that is latent in every single human being. Psychological knowledge that is already there inside, pre-programmed in every single human being. And it is waiting to be discovered and applied with transformational effects for any life. So I'm not talking about ivory tower kind of uh, um, uh, academic information that, that, that needs to be uh, intellectualized abstract uh, information. I am talking specifically about latent powers that wait to be discovered through their application, not through their memorization, as if you're going to uh, uh, write and attempt to pass an exam. That's the kind of psychology that I am referring to uh, here today. And that um, brings me to the uh, 
related question of psychology versus technology, and it's quite important to understand that uh, the future is psychological. It is not technological. Because as I just said, the present is psychological, and it is not technological. And I know that many of you out there listening today are uh, students, so it's quite important for you to future-proof your career. We've seen uh, with the COVID crisis a major failure of uh, so-called artificial intelligence and uh, predictive analytics. It's a, it's a major failure because the predictions of artificial intelligence and predictive analytics are obsolete at the very point of generation. As they are generated, they are obsolete because they have built in obsoleteness. They are based on the unstated assumption that the past will keep repeating. And this assumption is, of course, wrong. This assumption is, of course, wrong, as we saw with the black swan event of COVID-19. Technology is a servant, it is not a master. So like it's uh, serving us here today and uh, bringing us uh, together with uh, excellent uh, effects, I should say. So it is therefore inwards that we should uh, turn the focus of our attention against the false promises of artificial so-called intelligence and the like. And that uh, takes us back to square one. And what is square one? Know thyself. Know uh, uh, thyself, which is a maxim from two and a half thousand years ago. And um, this is uh, self-knowledge. You know, true self-knowledge is absolutely essential for long-term success. And it is the number one asset for conscious uh, creativity. Now, most of us, unfortunately, tend to think that we already have self-knowledge and we, we equate self-knowledge with uh, the collection of memories and information about ourselves. So I, I, I like this and I don't like that and I used to like this but I don't like it anymore and that is my favorite wine and that is my favorite actress and the collection of all these memories and information and, and, and preferences uh, is myself, is self-knowledge. But this is not self-knowledge. Self-knowledge is something that is direct, spontaneous. It is not mediated by the mind. And these are uh, these issues and, and many more uh, are explained in my grand system of uh, psychobionomy, which owe, owes a lot to Indian and uh, Vedic philosophy of mind, as I have absolutely no time to explain right now, but will certainly do so in the future. And I will explain how this grand system of psychobionomy, which is directed and aims uh, at the achievement of self-knowledge, is, is basically underpinned by uh, Indian Vedic philosophy uh, of mind. So, mind over matter is one of the messages of the webinar today. Mind over matter. Mind over matter equals determination. Mind over matter equals determination. So... It's either mind over COVID or COVID hanging over your mind. COVID and, you, and its effects hanging over your mind, like it's happening with millions of people today, right? What's going to happen to my livelihood? What's going to happen with my business? What's going to, so this COVID disruption has gone to the core of their existence. But it is possible to come out of this, okay? Because COVID-19 will into life's background one way or another. Maybe they will find a vaccine or maybe we'll just have to learn to live, to live in this uh, new normal you know, with, with the restrictions, with the, um, with the masks and whatever it is with the, with the social distancing. We will learn to live with this. Or maybe, as I said, a vaccine is going to uh, uh, come onto the scene and, and partially or completely resolve the problem. So COVID will fit into life's background one way or another. But your thinking style will not. The way that you think, the way that you live your life, the way uh, your stream of cognition will be with you. It will not fade into the background and it will keep producing results for you. So it's really important that you actually take charge of this and, and, and you are on top of your thinking style and to produce the results that you want to see, that you want to experience in your own life. So we've got to eliminate poverty thinking, eliminate sickness thinking, eliminate self-doubt, eliminate all these diseases of the mind. And uh, one way that this can be done is through the application of the technologies that uh, we are developing in, uh, in my lab. Uh, 
so I was only uh, able to touch on the surface of these uh, topics because I know we are pressed uh, for time and it might be getting really, really late in some parts of the world. Uh, we are engaged in an effort of uh, knowledge sharing in the lab simply because the world needs it today uh, more than ever. So now, with the help of uh, uh, many good friends and supporters uh, worldwide and directed by my uh, very good wife, uh, Lila, we have... Uh, we are building a presence on uh, social media, on um, Facebook, Instagram, and a number of uh, web pages that you can actually access from our, our main website. And you can see on this slide. So you can go and uh, uh, register or like us, or whatever it is that uh, one does in these, uh, in these websites, and um, help us to uh, help you and disseminate uh, the true knowledge that can... Uh, change people, people's lives. And with this, uh, I know that we have promised you a short Q&A session, so I would like to close by uh, thanking once again uh, Basaveshwa College, the principal coordinators, specifically Dr. Hanji, for organizing this uh, event and giving me the opportunity to connect with you all. Dr. Hanji, over to you. Yes, sir. That was a wonderful session, uh, Doctor. Now, uh, as we promised uh, uh, to the participants, uh, they can ask questions. We have some questions here. Uh, the first question is from uh, Ms. Pooja Anand, uh, who wants to know, uh, the query is, why do you conceptualize uh, EI as, tra as a trait and does trade EI entail the idea of developing EI? So. Uh, yes, yeah, that, that is uh, uh, an excellent, that's an excellent uh, question. And of course, you know, goes back to the uh, scientific uh, literature. Now, trait emotional intelligence is a very broad theory. Uh, it is not, I mean, some people see trait EI uh, as a subset of the EI literature. So they see uh, psychology, which has, many different divisions like uh, educational, occupational, uh, biological, cognitive, individual differences. Within individual differences, you have personality, intelligence, attitudes. Within uh, uh, personality, you have emotional intelligence. Within emotional intelligence, you have ability, I, and trait. I. That's not the right way of looking at it. Trait I is a grand theory of personality. It's, it, it spans across many different um, areas and don't question. So, in fact, in one of my uh, uh, latest papers in uh, in the last couple of years, I, I explained how ability I can actually be seen as a small subset of trait emotional intelligence. So that's the first uh, that hopefully goes some way towards answering the uh, the first question. In relation to the second question, can it be developed? Absolutely, is the question uh, uh, the answer. Absolutely, it can be developed, but it is not something that can be developed you know, quickly in a rush, in a seminar, or as an afterthought. You really do need to apply yourself into changing your, your uh, uh, trait emotional intelligence, changing your personality, in fact, revolutionizing it, and uh, revo revolutionizing it to an extent that you can actually create your own external life, because that's the, the, the final frontier, the final outcome is to actually create the external conditions, the external circumstances that you want to see in your life. And what I'm saying here today, through trait emotional intelligence theory, through psychobionomy, more significant is that if you want to see this change in your external conditions, in your job, in your marriage, in your relationship, in your health, you really do need to start within, from your psychology. This is the uh, the main message today. So absolutely, you can you can uh, uh, develop and uh, uh, improve, optimize your trait emotional intelligence. You can actually develop, optimize, and improve your entire life, not just your trait AI or your psychology or your philosophy. You can really optimize and maximize your entire life, including very significantly uh, external conditions and circumstances. Thank you, sir. So there is an, another question. Uh, 
by Vani Balal. Good evening, sir. She asks, um, how can we help students of all age groups uh, to adapt uh, to the changes what are happening now, uh, to the, especially to the school children? Um, so could you repeat that, uh, Dr. Hanji? So, How can we uh, help? What she's asking is, uh, I mean, um, she wants to know how we can help the students of all age groups uh, adapt to the changes. Now, what, what the changes, what are happening now? Yes. Well, students are not really uh, different from... from adolescents or adults it, it they're not, the, the obviously you know they're more vulnerable and they need more direction but they need to learn they need to be taught which is something that we're not really doing in most educational systems certainly not in the western world they need to know that they have to take charge of your of their own thinking they have to take charge of their own uh, uh, destiny that's not something that we really, you know, we're very busy uh, teaching them uh, English and uh, maths and history, but we're not really teaching them basic uh, facts about life. So, you know, some of the things that I mentioned today and uh, some of the things that I am expanding on in our various uh, uh, websites and social media are some of the, th are the very things that need to be adapted and uh, taught into children. It's, just, it's the same ideas, you see. You know, this, you know, the children and the adults are not... The in fact, the reason why we have to teach this to adults is because they were never taught this, in th this, this knowledge when they were young, when they were children. So the same message that I am giving to adults applies to children as well. So obviously, you know, people who have the um, uh, the ability and 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 the knowledge and the talent to communicate with children needs to take these messages and adapt them uh, for for use with with young children and adolescents. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. That's very important, I think, for the children. Uh, another question by Z Chen. Z Chen. Um, he says, "Thank you very much, uh, Professor. Could you please enlighten us?" on how uh, on, on us on the relationship between psychobionomy, radix intelligence, trait AI, and personality. Okay, well, well, this, so radix intelligence is uh, another, you know, fairly new development in, uh, in my uh, uh, theories and systems. But generally speaking, psychobionomy is the grand system. Everything that I do is, is an aspect of psychobionomy because psychobionomy is, is the grand system that can help any person, any individual take char charge of their life. So you, you can yeah, uh, understand the importance and, and the possibilities of this because taking charge of your life means that you can actually create a life that you wanted to experience, create your life as you want it to be, irrespective of COVID, irrespective of the economic uh, circumstances, irrespective of whether you are born in Greece or in India or in uh, China or Brazil or Denmark, irrespective of all these external circumstances, through the application of the um, uh, system of psychobionomy and its principles and, and technologies, you can actually get to a point where you can create your own life. Now, you know, many people need help in uh, uh, different areas. So some people might need particular help with handling their emotions, understanding their emotional world conscious as well as subconscious. And that's where trait emotional intelligence theory comes in. Many people uh, have difficulties with the perceptions, how they perceive themselves, how they understand the world. That's where radix intelligence uh, comes in. And they have uh, uh, other theories as well that are designed to deal with specific difficulties and challenges that individuals, uh, uh, people face in particular areas domains in their life but all this is integrated within the grand system of psychobionomy that is you know the, the, the mother system and everything else is an aspect of it thank you okay sir there are many questions coming up um, sir there is another question by uh, um, Ms. Ashwin, ashwini is there any link between um, emotional intelligence neuros and neuroscience if it is, then uh, what are its effects? Uh, yes, and you know, certainly, you know, many have written about this, and I, I have written with colleagues in a, in a paper in 2016. And if you actually go into our website, I should say this is my main web 
website and you can download from there all our research papers, you know, going back 20 years. You can download and you can see all the information, research methods, statistical analysis, discussion, all is and, and free of charge as well. So there's a paper in 2016 where we review the latest uh, uh, research relating to trade AI and there is a section on uh, biological uh, neuro uh, psychological uh, effects. Generally speaking, however, and this is one major differentiation between the trait emotional intelligence model and Goldman's model of emotional intelligence, a, a, a major dimension differentiating these two approaches, is that trait AI is an approach that is psychological, mental. It does, it, it, if you see the uh, uh, Goldman's approach to emotional intelligence, is very uh, neurobiological. In other words, that emotions are somehow rooted in the brain. And if you uh, read the book, you'll see all the circuits and, and uh, uh, brain structures and functions that affect uh, emotion. Trait emotional intelligence is completely different to that because trait AI is a psychological theory and it actually says and argues that your emotions and the way you experience emotion and handle emotion is to do with things that are happening in your mind, in the way that you perceive life, in the way that you perceive yourself, in the way that you perceive uh, others. So it's not biologically rooted, it's psychologically rooted, and this is a major differentiation between the trade AI model and uh, uh, Goldman's model of, uh, of AI. Thank you. Okay. Um. Sir, there is uh, one, I mean, there are a lot of questions. I mean, how many questions we can take, sir? I mean, uh, uh, I, can, can, I can take a few more. I mean, I don't know. Uh, well, you know, we can go for another, I, I don't know, uh, 10, 15 minutes. I'm happy to, uh, to give okay. to that. I okay. I've got enough battery here, I think. So, uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, we have another question by Aisha Firdos. So, can you please share any tips to control or change our emotions or emotional detachment. So that's what she wants now. Yes, I mean, first of all, it's quite important that we understand that we need to have this uh, uh, control over our emotions. I mean, that is the first step, the understanding that, that we need to take charge, the understanding and the need to take charge. You know, that is important. Not everybody has that. You know, a lot of people are uh, completely resigned to the way uh, life unfolds and there's and, you know they're just uh, you know beaten up by life so understanding that it is possible and wanting to do it is the first is the first step then you really need to start uh, you know working with yourself and find out you know, what are the triggers of your emotional reactions what are the triggers of the difficulties and challenges that you are experiencing and what is the result uh, 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 the consequences and antecedents of these of these difficulties, so you need to start going inside and and analyzing your uh, your own situation. And again, I've explained, I've given examples of this in some of my papers. If you check the psychobionomy paper from 2019, I give an example of how we can actually do this analysis, um, this self analysis that allows us to get to the cause of our uh, emotional dysfunction and resolve it. So there's not a a tip per se, other than to say that you have to work with your own psychology. That's very important, you see, because some people just are lying flat and, and they're completely helpless in terms of, uh, you know, what life serves them. And they just, you know, sit there and think. Other people think that it is beyond their control. What can you do? You know, they're trying, but they think, you know, this, you know, this is bigger than me. You know, that's another uh, wrong cognition, that whatever it is that I'm facing is bigger than me. That is always a falsehood. You are bigger than anything that comes uh, and hits you. Much, much bigger. So you've got to understand your own potential. You've got to understand your own pos possibilities that are there for you to be, to be explored and exploited. So never give up. You've got to go inside, uh, uh, find your difficulties and, and resolve them. And always know that you are much, much bigger than anything that life can uh, uh, hit you with. Whatever life hits you with is something that you have actually created. You have created it in order to overcome it and realize, understand the own power that's lying there inside you. Thank you. That's nice, sir. That's very encouraging. Um, sir, next question is by Bogdan Zadorsini. Um, excellent, he says, excellent presentation. What do you think is the role of trade AI and testing self for the self-improvement 
Do you believe that test retest would lead to dynamically changing results? And uh, that is by Bogdan Zaloski from Monteville. Yeah. Um, yes. Again, I mean that's you know some of the questions require a lot of um, uh, exposition. But test retest, of course one way of doing it and finding out if there are specific changes in your profile as a result of some kind of intervention that you have actually engaged in. So a lot of people will take the TQ, for example, uh, find out where they stand uh, for the time being, you know, what the profile is right now, and then they will engage in some kind of uh, intervention, uh, trying to change themselves, optimize the profile, and uh, later on down the line, they will retake the instrument, and they will find uh, what these changes are. And this can be a very informative uh, process. So yes, test, retest, absolutely. Uh, uh, it can be very helpful. And I think there was another part of this question which I might have missed. Um, it says... Well, we, we can move to the, uh, to the next one, uh, uh, Dr. Hanji. Uh, try and take as many as yeah. we can. Sure. Uh, we have a question from Chandrasekhar K, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar K. He asks whether um, meditation, how meditation will help us to, um, you know, control our emotions. It's absolutely <laughs> essential. And, uh, of course, you know, we don't have time to go into any book. I'm writing on meditation right now because, of course, the first thing that I needed to do was present the theoretical principles of psychobionomy, which has been very, very challenging, and I've been working on this for many, many years. But the next thing, which is obviously uh, important, absolutely crucial, is the, the practical aspect. How do you apply it? And, and meditation is the yeah. number one tool. Yeah, I really don't think you can go through life without meditation, frankly. You know, if from this uh, meeting today, from this webinar, if, if you were to take one thing uh, with you, if you are to remember one thing, this is going to practice your meditation. Yeah, that is, meditation is the gateway to, to all these powers that lay latent inside. You know, through medi medi meditation, you are going to find uh, inside you tremendous power, tremendous possibility. Uh, and, and meditation is the key. I mean, if you take one thing from this webinar is establish a daily meditation uh, practice and, and be faithful to it. Be faithful to your meditation. So it's indispensable. It's a, that's an excellent question. I'm very happy that I was uh, able to, uh, to uh, uh, discuss meditation in the webinar today. Um, we have one more question. Last question. We're going to take it uh, from yes, last but um, next. External conditions seems to be by definition external. Mm. Now, what do you mean by transforming our inner self? Uh, external <coughs> conditions will also change, presumably to us at this end. That's yes. That's yeah, again, a very good question. You know, what appears to be external is not really external. It's simply a projection of your of your own mind. So, you know, there's no internal and external. So I'm just using this as a concession to uh, uh, communicating. But there's no internal and external. You know, wh what we perceive as external uh, conditions, external circumstances, are simply projections of our own mind. There is a, a integration uh, and, and uh, oneness of mind. So basically what we appear to be... Uh, experiencing in the outside world through our senses is simply a projection of our own mind. And when we understand that, then we also understand the possibilities of creating a reality exactly as we want to experience it. The reason why we are able to do that is because we can change our thinking style, we can change our perceptions and the perceptions of life, and these changes, when they happen deep inside us, then are reflected outside. But really, this reflection into the external world it's not really that. It's, you know, simply a way of experiencing your own self. There's no internal and external in the final analysis. You know, what you're perceiving as external is simply an extension of your own mind. And by changing your own mind, you can, of course, cause changes to this extension. So, okay, sir. I think that's a very powerful message. And uh, <laughs> this, we, we, we can write it, we, we can wrap it up. Yes, yes, of course. So, I'm... Um, um, I really so, uh, sorry for other participants whose questions mm, were still not answered, but I think most of them um, have been answered and uh, they were all satisfactorily answered, I hope. And uh, it was a wonderful uh, eye-opening uh, QA session, sir, what I have been through. And, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, it was really, really 
interesting to know about psychobionomy and uh, and and um, it was uh, also a privilege to hear about trait emotional intelligence by uh, yourself directly from yourself yeah and so uh, we are on the fag end of this <laughs> we are thank on the you, thank you so much uh, thank you sir. thank you I guess, you know, we'd like to thank you for, you know, all the organization, which has been absolutely tremendous. It's really difficult to organize all this technologically in so many different countries and so many different, uh, uh, you know, points of contact. So I'm really, you know, grateful for giving me this opportunity. The organization has been absolutely magnificent and uh, I'm really grateful to you. And I hope that uh, all the listeners uh, found, it, uh, found it useful. So thank you so much. Yes, sir. So I'd like to propose a word of thanks. Uh, so firstly, I'd like to thank uh, Professor Dr. Kerry Patrice um, for sparing his time with us and uh, taking interest uh, in organizing this webinar jointly uh, with us. And we have been working on this webinar for past two months because we, we got only appointment in the second week of uh, second half of July. So I'm, I'm, I was just waiting for the dates and uh, today we, we are here. We listened to him. And, um, and also, I'd like to thank um, uh, London Psychometric Club. I mean, I think participants uh, should know that where to uh, reach him. That is on uh, London Psychometric Lab, um, which is uh, the website, official website, where you can reach to uh, Dr. Patrice. And also, you can download his research work there. And thank you, sir. And also, I also thank the management of BVV Sangha for encouraging us to carry out this webinar. And also our uh, principal, Dr. SS Engineering, uh, for encouraging and supporting us to do this. And all my uh, faculty colleagues, students who helped us, and all the people who are directly and indirectly involved in this webinar and most importantly i thank the center of attraction all the participants from all countries uh, thank you very much for being with with us here and uh, taking benefit of this webinar thank you very much and have a nice day thank you thank you Dr. thank you sir thank you thank you, very much, sir. Thank, you. thank you sir